Hey everybody, it's Jack and welcome back. It is yet again that time of the week where I update you all on my Wealth Simple Small Account Challenge. So we just wrapped up week six of the overall challenge and it was a pretty good week for the stock market as a whole. We saw quite a few green days get strung together, which we hadn't seen in quite a bit of time. You know, we went through a period of a few shaky weeks in a row with the stock market being down overall. So we're slowly starting to see a recovery it looks like potentially, and we'll see how it continues in the few weeks to come. As for this video, I will get into all the moves I made last week, what stocks I bought, how many shares, which stocks, as well if there's any stocks or positions in my account that I sold. And then after that, we'll get into my overall strategy going into the next week and what stocks I plan to add and what my overall goal is for the week ahead. So again, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's jump right in. So for anybody who's new to the channel, I'm currently undergoing a wealth simple small account challenge where my goal is to bring a $1,000 account up to $100,000 through saving like crazy and smart investing. Every week I put a little bit of money into my investment account and invest in a few stocks a week with the overall goal being one day to retire off of my investment and to be able to live off of them. So that is the big picture and let's get into how this week went. So as far as my overall account status, my account currently sits at $2,618.17, so up quite a little bit from last week. And we ended with Friday being up 1.33% or $34. And for the week as a whole, we we're up just over 4% at $104.35. So quite a good week overall. And I think almost every single one of my actual stock picks was up for the week, which is not always the case. And that was pretty good to see. So we're up quite a bit this week and I'm overall really happy with the week and how it went. So as far as new positions go or any new stocks that I added to my account, I added one new position this week. I added a new ETF to my portfolio and it is QQC-F. This is a NASDAQ 100 ETF. So what this does is this ETF is comprised of all of the top 100 companies on the NASDAQ stock exchange. So this makes up the majority of big tech. So you're getting exposure and diversification to Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, all those companies. So this is really great because my account didn't really have any uh, technology industry in it. So this is my kind of technology play that gives me some good exposure to the tech space and some more exposure to the American stock market as a Canadian investor. QQC-F was down overall from the past few weeks. So I decided to start a position, thought it was a good time and got in at around one share at $106. So it is a little bit of a more expensive ETF, but in the long run, this one has seen extremely good returns. If you had invested $10,000 into this ETF a decade ago, it would be worth more than $60,000 today. So over a 10 year span, it more than six times its value. So this is one that has seen some really good year over year growth going up on average 20% per year. So before we jump over to my Excel spreadsheet where I'll show you all of the stocks I purchased this week, let's first run through a quick overview of all the stocks I currently hold. So I hold currently 10 stocks and three ETFs for a total of 13 positions in my account. So I own Algonquin Power, AQN, Brookfield Renewable, EPC, Enbridge, ENB, Fortis, FTS, and then my growth stocks are Good Natured Products, GDMP, GRN, Green Lane Renewables, and then I've got H2O Innovations and Standard Lithium are my two largest positions in my account and are both those high growth penny stocks. And then there's my new ETF, QQC-F, and then I have two more dividend stocks in Smart Centers Real Estate Investment Trust, SRU-UN, which pays a nice monthly dividend to keep the cash flow up. And then I also have TELUS, a telecom company, which is a great dividend stock and a growth play long term. And then I have my other two ETFs in VDY, which is that Canadian dividend paying ETF. And then I also have VFV, which tracks the S&P 500, the US stock market. So there you have it, my 10 stocks and three ETFs. So let's now jump over to my Excel spreadsheet where I track my dividends and how they grow each and every week and my overall stock positions. So here's my Excel spreadsheet where I easily track my passive income from my dividends as well as my portfolio breakdown by each stock position. If you want to use this Excel spreadsheet, I will have a link in the description below 
where you can download a template version and play around with it yourself. So go ahead and download it below and then put your own positions in and you can track your own income and portfolio with this easy spreadsheet. Let me know if you run into any issues or problems with the spreadsheets in the comments and I can help you out. So getting into my stock positions, I didn't sell a single stock the past week and I don't see myself selling any of them in the foreseeable short term future. All of the stocks or ETFs I own are long term holds. I'm really going with the buy and hold long term strategy. There's a saying that says time in the market beats timing the market, which I truly believe in. So for the stock positions I added to over the past week, I've added to quite a few positions, the majority being dividend stocks. So besides the new ETF that I added, I went ahead and added two shares to my Algonquin Power and Utilities. So I was at 12 shares. I'm now at 14. I also added one Fortis stock and I also added one Telus stock. So you're going to see that I've added almost one stock to each of my dividend positions. Other than Enbridge, I added one to Smart Center's Real Estate Investment Trust that pays that monthly dividend. So by adding another one, hopefully you start to increase that monthly dividend that I'm getting each and every month. I also added one to Brookfield Renewable. It took a little bit of a dip early in the week. So I brought my overall cost basis down and dollar cost averaged myself lower into the position. I didn't add any to H2O or Standard Lithium. I'm still waiting for both of these to either start to recover because I am down on both of those and they are my largest positions or I'm waiting for them to come down lower into support levels that I talked about in my previous video last week update and then that's where I'll be buying in more. So they're kind of in this no man's land right now so I'm just waiting to see which direction they go. And then I have good natured products. I think I added about 10 shares to this position. It's kind of been hovering in the 120 area. And I've also added 20 or so shares to Green Lane Renewables. They had earnings come out this week that was kind of just mediocre. They increased revenue by a fair amount. Their overall profit margins were not great and they were actually not profitable the previous quarter. So they're kind of hovering around that $2 range. So I'm kind of waiting to see where they go as well. And then as far as my Canadian dividend ETF, I added one more share to get a total of four. So overall theme for the week was I added majority to my overall dividend positions to help increase them in size and bring them up to higher weightings of my portfolio. And I didn't add too many growth stocks other than that one growth ETF, the QQC-F, and a few green lane renewable shares. So if we now go to my dividend tracking, we can see that the extra dividend shares that I added to a bunch of my positions really helped to increase my overall passive income. The previous week's totals were my monthly average was 383 and my annual dividends was $45.93. And currently today, this week, they are now at $57.36 for my annual rate. And my monthly dividends is $4.78. So we were able to add 12 or so dollars to our annual income from our dividends and add a full dollar to our monthly average. So again, this is the goal that each week we're going to add some dividend shares to our overall portfolio. And this is going to increase our annual income and monthly income long term. So we increased it $12 last week. And if we keep this going for years and years to come, you're going to see how this quickly adds up. And it begins to snowball as those dividends come in and we just buy more shares with the dividends that come in more and more shares into the future and this really starts to ramp up and snowball faster and faster and faster so now jumping into our portfolio breakdown and looking at our pie chart this is what shows us the weightings and how much we have in each position that i hold so you can see that standard lithium and h2o innovations heo are by far our biggest positions at 18.8 and 17% of the overall account. And my goal over the past few weeks has been to bring down their weightings. They started at around 30% of the account each, then they went down to 25, 25, and this week they're around 18 and 17. So we're really bringing those down, de-risking our account as a whole, and really trying to focus on adding into the dividend positions and boosting them up. Because again, to reiterate, our long-term goal is to get around 20 to 30% in those growth, high growth penny stocks, then we're going to get around 30% in our ETFs and the remainder 50 to 60% will be in our dividend stocks. So currently our growth stocks make up around 45% of the account. So we're trying to bring that down to that 20-30 range. 
Our ETFs are around 15, so we're trying to boost those up. And then as far as our dividend goes, they currently make up 40% of the portfolio. So again, I still need to boost the overall dividend and ETF positions to bring their weightings of the overall account up. Because again, the ideal weightings are around 50% dividend, 20 to 30% growth, and then 20% ETF to have a well-balanced and diversified portfolio. So heading over to this week's watch list and the stocks that I'm going to be looking to buy over the coming week, I'm going to be focusing primarily on ETFs this week as the stock market kind of is in this kind of no man's land, not sure whether it's going to be continuing upwards or heading down. I want to focus on diversifying my portfolio through my ETF positions and just adding to them as a whole. So as far as it goes for my growth ETFs, I want to add another share to my NASDAQ 100 ETF, my new position, QQC-F, and I want to look to add below $106 to average down my overall cost before this one begins to go back to all-time highs. I also want to add a brand new ETF to my portfolio, a Canadian technology ETF. It trades under the ticker symbol XIT. I want to start a brand new position in this stock to get some exposure to Shopify and other big name tech brands that are held within this ETF. It will be featured in a video coming out tomorrow. And then for dividend positions, I want to add a few more shares to Algonquin Power as it's still below $20. I think this is a great deal for Algonquin Power as it sold off quite heavily because of some bad news about one of its wind farms being damaged and it still hasn't recovered fully from there. And I think this is a great dividend and growth play long term. And then sticking onto the ETF focus for the week, I want to add a few more shares to my Canadian high yield dividend ETF, VDY, which gives me overall exposure to great Canadian dividend paying stocks, such as the big banks, which I don't currently have in my portfolio. So this gives me some exposure to them. That gets right into my final dividend stock on the watch list. It is TD Bank. I want to add a Canadian bank stock to my portfolio. However, they are currently trading at all time highs. So I kind of want to wait for TD to pull back. And TD is my favorite of the big Canadian bank stocks. And I will consider buying if it falls below the $78 range but currently it is at trading at all time highs between 81 and $82. And that wraps up my watch list for the week. So there you have it. There is my watch list and my outlook for the week ahead. I'm going to be focusing on adding ETFs this week to my portfolio as I hope to diversify even further and overall just wait to see which way the stock market is going to go. Are we going to see a more of a decline or are we starting to head in the upwards direction? I really just want to wait and find out before I invest further into my growth stocks or decide to add further to my dividend stock. So I urge anyone watching to start their own investment journey today. It is never too late to start investing. You will thank yourself tenfold down the road for starting today. Just take that leap and jump into it. Wealth Simple makes it super easy and I will put a link down below to get 10 free dollars when you trade your first 100 using Wealth Simple, Canada's only $0 commission trading platform. This platform makes it really easy to invest. I've learned so much already through this challenge and I want you guys to learn as well. That is the goal of this. So start that challenge down below in the description and you will not regret it, I swear. So with that being said, thanks again for watching. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you like this one, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.